You're listening to Garden Master Ken Lane and the Top 10 Gardener Podcast. Welcome to the Top 10 Garden Show. And back in the studio is Lisa Waters Lane. She comes each week with your garden questions. Just what are people asking, commenting, coming in for? What are people talking about around the town about their gardens? So welcome back to the uh, studio, Lisa. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, your holidays going okay? Very good. So Christmas done and gone. I've even got it packed up and put away. Boy, already. you're fast. <laughs> I'm telling you, Christmas Eve, she's ready to just... Almost go. Uh, we, <laughs> so, had, we had it up early this we, year. We did not. We did. Yeah, we did. So, anyways, I was I was ready to pack it away. It felt good. I'm proud of you. For? You didn't throw the poinsettias I out didn't. the front door. You kept I them for know. they're so beautiful. They were good. They're stunning. She got she brought in some new varieties, some new mm -hmm. colors. You know, we own a garden center. We can have the latest, greatest, newest thing. It's just a shame to have uh -huh. it just destroyed in one night's cold well yeah they just have held up so well and you're right they are very very pretty so i thought okay i'll leave them for a little, a little longer till till thanks till um uh, <laughs> valentine's valentine's <laughs> we'll see if they make it that long I don't know. when they start dropping leaves that's what bothers me too i'd say throw them out they start to whine and complain about the shorter days or it right. got cold or too dry or i don't know chuck them then but they look so good now they proud do. of you yeah thank you what are people talking about? What's going on here so, that, uh, that that we're in between the holidays right. uh, and we're still drinking eggnog and they're still gardening <laughs> or they're at, gardeners are always thinking gardening for some that reason. That is true. That is true. So uh, <laughs> first question is from Mark. He says, does the rain we had last week count as a watering for the month or do I still need two deep waterings in a month? You know, I... Mark, I, I don't know how much rain came throughout all the regions. So this is broadcast throughout northern Arizona. And so, you know, the higher peaks might have gotten a little more, a little less. So without knowing your, you know, you get around a mountain, the front, the uh, west side gets a lot of rain. The back side gets none. So you get this like Granite Mountain has this weird, funky thing. One side gets so much rain and then the clouds dump their load and then they float over and then there's nothing left for the folks in the backside. So I, I'm not sure. Mark, I don't know. I would say <laughs> if you have to ask the question, probably you need two waterings. So I, I did do some digging in our yard, did some planting this week, and the ground was dry. So it was, yeah. it was, it was dry. And now I've got heavy clay soil. So if you had more sandy soil, maybe it would have been a little bit wetter but i don't think so i, I don't think, think it was enough the other thing to think about is we hadn't had any rain for oh, yeah, a point. long time so that yeah. that soil just took everything yeah. in and it, it, there's yeah. no saturation yet that's for sure yeah so i would still water so you should water for those folks that are tuned in you should be watering two times a month a deep soak especially those plants that are, are newer if they're under two years old got a newer property, you've got a brand new, uh, let's say a living Christmas tree, you just put in the ground. Uh, you need to be watering that mm -hmm. twice a month, a deep soak, like, like, like you would in June when it's 95 degrees out, water it that much and then let it go for a couple of weeks. So it's easy to overdo it this time of year, but it's easier to underdo it because you just, you're thinking, oh, they're cold. Right. They're fine. Yeah. You know, and evergreens, especially mm -hmm. they hold those needles until they are dead and they turn like in in a week they go from green <laughs> people go what happened to brown like that with yeah. well, they died a month ago they just mm -hmm. you didn't know it yet right. so hydration hydration if yep. you're thirsty it probably is too and if you have to ask the question go ahead i would say a deep snow like six inches or more that's enough moisture an inch of rain and i know we didn't get that much that might be enough. And that's where you're seeing the ground saturate and starting to flow. So that dry creek in the backyard, you're seeing that start to run. Mm -hmm. We didn't see that because the ground was dry. It absorbed every every drop right. of rain. So it did take the edge off the forest, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. So it's oh, good. Yeah. It's any, not bad. Any rain is good. Yep. I would also say if you really want to know, go out with a piece of rebar. Well, there you go. A long screwdriver. Go poke around in that soil and yeah. that'll help you too. So you poke around and if you can get the, uh, let's say your biggest flathead screwdriver in your toolbox. I mean, not a skinny one, a, a fat chubby one uh, or a small piece of rebar. If you can get that in the ground, it's moist. 
if you've got to like, oh my gosh, I can't get that in the ground. <laughs> it's dry. So that's right. the secret. Yeah. Okay. Next question is from Cheryl. She has a large peony in a pot. She wants to know if she can trim it back now. And if yes, do you cut it back down to the soil or you do you leave yeah, some good of the question. There? That's a good question. This is not just for containers. It's for any peony in the ground, in the garden, raised beds, wherever. So they've grown up. So you've got English peonies are good knee, knee high or, or, or taller. Your Ito peonies are hip high. They're up to, they're, they're much bigger and they're both treated the same way. So you're going to cut that back down to the ground. And just as close as you can without nicking the eyelets that might be coming up. I haven't checked hours. So I still have hours up. It's, it's on my to-do list. I'll get mm. there eventually. <laughs> There's no rush. Right. So I'd say by the end of February, you should be cutting back your perennials, including, per including the peonies. So you're cutting those back to, I don't know, an inch or two to the ground, something mm -hmm. like that. Now, peonies are very robust. They can go down to minus... I think 40 or maybe minus 50 degrees. They they don't mind the cold mm -hmm. at all. And you'll find them start to emerge from the garden, from the soil, from that container uh, about, you know, sometime after January. So February, sometime you'll start to see, oh, eyelets are coming up. Oh, it's, it's, it's so gardeners go, oh, mm -hmm. spring's coming. Oh, I can't wait for that flower in April and May. So I'd say take your time, Cut it back as close as you can and, and watch for, are there eyelets coming out yet? And I don't know yet, mm -hmm. but if you do, don't nick those because that's that next, this, this growth. spring's growth. Mm -hmm. But if not, just cut it back. doesn't matter. It's okay. not going to hurt it to have right. it up. Not going to hurt it to have it back. They just don't care, but they don't want it. All that extra brown growth. They want last year's growth shading this year's new spring growth, they want the sunshine. So mm -hmm. probably if you start to cut it back, they'll start to the ground will warm up and you'll start to see that growth happen a little sooner. Mm -hmm. And water. Good question. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> water. Water your peonies. Don't let them, <laughs> Don't let them go dry. dry. Yeah. All right. I think we got time for one more. Uh, this one is from Amanda. She is getting ready to, um, She's got a raised bed she put in last year. She's getting ready, wants okay. to get them ready for the coming spring. Yeah, easy. The question is, besides mulch uh, or soil, what else would you add into that sure. bed? Sure. So, so if it's a brand new bed, or oh, brand new or or older bed, mm -hmm. what happens is in raised beds, because the space is so confined, it's only got this much soil. It can't reach out and go, I'm kind of, this is kind of old soil. I need to root over there and pick up some more nutrients over there. It's it's confined. It's like a container garden. So you need to revitalize or refresh in that. And so for last year's uh, raised beds, it had plants in them. There's old roots. There, there's last year's plants. Pull those things out. Old roots in the ground rot or they start to compost. They taint the soil and they keep other roots from growing in that space. Mm -hmm. That is not good when you're in a confined you know, raised bed space. You want to get rid of those. So, so filter that out and then plants use up the soil. And so you need to add some freshness to it. That's where your compost, we make a premium mulch that we compost it for a very long time. And we screen it down to quarter inch minus. It's very fine. So it looks like a rich, it's almost like coffee grounds and the plants just respond to it as nutrients. Manure, this is this time of year, look, get some barnyard manure. We, we make a deodorized manure. So it's not gross. So it's like, <laughs> I realize manure, poop is bad, stinky, gooey, gross, but not ours. We compost it an extra long time. And then we cut it with some real fine, well, our mulch. And so it comes out deodorized. You can't even tell us manure. You'll never see a, a poop nugget a turd <laughs> That's in there. Too much. Yeah, it's not going <laughs> to, that would be a good, good additive on top of there too. And then here's the insider tip. So our plants are grown in water's potting soil. So potting soil is a grower's mix. That's our grower's mix. And so our, our tomatoes or cucumbers or flowers, they're started in this, whether it's a cutting or a seed, we start it in water's potting soil. If you can have that top layer, let's say top six to eight inches of your containers or, or raised beds, and you could put a few bags of water's potting soil on, and you're planting directly into that, you are going to have tremendous success because plants don't like to go through different soil types. They like the same, they like sameness. So if you can give it more of the same thing it's already grown in, it's going to just thrive and you'll get bigger plants sooner, faster. Anyway, top layer 
add some water spotting. So other than that, you're ready to plant starting usually yeah. after Valentine's or so. Spring, so, or spring plants. Yeah. Anyway, we are out of time. Yeah. Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. Be right back after this. Hi, Waters with this week's Plant of the Week, our True Blue Fat Albert Spruce. At just 15 feet, this is the ideal evergreen for small gardens, excellent in front yards with limited space. The color is so blue all year long with the perfect evergreen shape. Dense, durable, and loves the sun, so it works well as a windbreak, screen, or sound barrier, and only found at... Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, for people who love the perfect blue spruce, love to shop. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. the Top 10 Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Family Garden Center. Listen daily as he answers the Top 10 Questions of the Week, streaming on Apple, Google, Spotify, or wherever you download your podcasts. 